Help me out with the, the chorus, please, everyone. Fam, you need to get saved, you know. Nah. It's been a long time I've spoken to you about Jesus, and it feels like you're just going back and forth, but let me just hear, let me just hear. What's the reason now? Let me tell you about my sides. I come from the north side of London. Okay. We never had, we just want them. These streets, we run them. Mm. Me to the brothers that say something. Eating the brothers like curry mutton. I touch drove with OZs. Touch base with the young Gs. They know me. I bust guns for funds. I move food for stacking up all my paper. My bosses are gold diggers. All they want is my page, blood. Yeah. Christ died so we can rise above defeat. So nah. when you're talking about bursting, you're bursting off more heat. Okay. Come as you are, even if you're at your peak. Concerned about money, God will bless you eternally. Really? It's true. There's many jacked up past, but those things that they get only last for a season. Create this world so there's nothing God can't do. Gangs and money, I know, ain't the real issue. Yes, it is. Fam, fam, you need yeah. to get saved. Why? Christ coming real soon before it's too late. I don't believe none of that. Why? It sounds too late. Take a look into my life, see the gospel ain't fake. Fam, fam, you need to get saved. Why? Christ coming real soon before it's too late. I don't believe none of that. Why? It sounds too late. Take a look into my life, see the gospel ain't fake. Family, stop talking about safe. Let me ask you something. Have you ever seen God's face? Where was he? Where my cousin had to catch the case? All the years in the beat, all his life got waste. Food for thought, let me give you a taste. A man with big nash trying to cut to the chase. Of a cousin got shed when a team got raced. But you're telling me I need to go to church and pray? It's true. God's face, I'm yet to see, but I can tell you God's real, cause he speaks through me. Don't wanna hear his word, then here's a true story about the way he changed me, my own testimony. Grew up in the east of N-O-N-D, kid, at 12, saved at 18, friends died before my eyes, I will post Kobe. So many things, but it was God I always see. Fam, fam, you need to get saved. Why? Christ coming real soon before it's too late. I don't believe none of that, Why? sounds too late. Take a look into my life, see the gospel ain't fake. Fam, fam, you need to get saved. Why? Christ coming real soon before it's too late. I don't believe none of that. Why? Sounds too late. Take a look into my life, see the gospel ain't fake. You know what? I feel I'm gonna try this God thing, you know. What do I have to lose? Take a chance, have faith and believe. Bow your head and repeat after me, dear Lord. I know I'm not where I wanna be, dear Lord. I know I'm not where I wanna be, and I know I'm a sinner, so please forgive me. And I know I'm a sinner, so please forgive me. I believe in your words, Christ paid the penalty. I believe in your words, Christ paid the penalty. How we died on that cross so I could be set free. How we died on that cross so I could be set free. From my shame, my guilt, Lord, come into my life. From my shame and my guilt, Lord, come into my life. To be my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. To be my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That's just the start, that's just the start. I hope you guys are making as much noise at the end of the service as well. <laughs> that's just the start. We got another main course that's coming. Uh, here this evening for us, uh, we've got Pastor Abdul from the Tottenham Church. So Pastor Abdul, he started off his ministry in, in Holloway, uh, and then he was um, he felt the call to go out to South Africa. He uh, he planted that he was planted out there in South Africa, did a tremendous work out there in South Africa, and then came back to the UK and ever since then he's been uh, in Tottenham faithfully again it's been a great few years that I've been out here in the ministry that I've been able to come to Pastor Abdul with different things uh, myself my wife Cameron even uh, with their family it's been tremendous help for us uh, so it's a great privilege actually for him to come and to minister for us here this evening so let's give a hand for Pastor Abdul
get over that. The one we get over, cross that the, the next uh, traffic lights by the Barclays Bank. Oh Lord, that's when the fights would have broke out. <laughs> yeah, really do appreciate yourself, uh, the church, the Pastor Young, his wife, Christina. Christina makes me laugh. I, I do love her, but she makes me laugh. You, you go on her WhatsApp, everybody's in the oh, oh, the woman of God, the old fish of God, the dog of God, the cat of God. The only one that's not bringing you is the devil of God. But I uh, really do appreciate her. Of course, Cams. Come on. Your comes. Who's comes? Who's comes? Our 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 adopted son right there, yeah. you know. He's really do appreciate every single one of you and uh, again they just scare the mind of God and I'm just trusting this is what God wants to say to this church. And what I tell people, it doesn't apply to you now, keeping your heart because it will. So let's go to Genesis forty two. Genesis forty two. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 8, and we're going to jump to verse 24. Genesis 42, 1 to 8 and 24. In the United States, uh, a lot of it can be desert land. And both the hummingbird and the vulture, they fly over the U.S. deserts and all the vultures look for and see is rotten meat, rotten flesh, carcasses of dead animals, even dead people, because that's exactly what they are looking for. They thrive on the diet of the dead, but the hummingbird is completely different. The hummingbird is looking for life. It is looking for that which blossoms and fills and colors, brings color you can say to the desert, because here's one animal, all it does is look for what was, another one is looking for what is. One animal looks at the past, another one looks at the future, or you can say the freshness of life, and each bird will find what it's looking for. And the truth of the matter of fact is so will you and I. I believe right now in this building there are some vultures, and I believe God wants to turn your life into a hummingbird. I want to look and victory over the past. Because there's one thing every single, every single one of us have in common is the past. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. Our past plays a massive, massive role in our lives. And God wants to give us victory over the past. Let's go to Genesis 42, verse 1 to verse 8. Then we're going to jump to verse 24. The Bible says, when Jacob saw that there was grain uh, in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, why do you look at one another? And he said, indeed, I have heard that there is green in Egypt. Go down to that place and buy a forest there that we may uh, live and not die. So Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy a grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers. For he said, lest some calamity before him. And the sons of Israel went to buy uh, uh, grain. Amongst those who journeyed from the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over the land, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brother came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them and spoke roughly to them. Then he said to them, where do you come from? And they said, from the land of Canaan to buy uh, food. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Now let's jump to verse 24. Verse 24, one verse. And he turned away from them. This is Joseph turning away from his brothers. And wept. Then he returned to them again and talked with them. And he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. Yeah. Father, this afternoon I'm grateful, God, for being with your people here. Father, I'm asking God you would have your way in this place. Father, there are precious souls in desperate need of salvation that are present. There are precious souls in desperate need of victory over the past. I'm asking God right now, Lord, you would use your servant to play, Father, whatever role you've called me to play in the lives of your <coughs> saints. I'm asking God that you will be the truth and every man will be a liar. God, you'll be lifted up in this place and that no one will leave it the same way they came. God, burdens will be lifted, yokes will be broken, you'll be glorified. Have your way in this afternoon. I thank you right now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Uh, 
And all God's people said, um, amen. Amen. amen, amen. I want to consider, first of all, that one of, one of the painful uh, truths of life. Uh, we left United Kingdom in 2005 to go to South Africa, not knowing we were going to be there for 11 years of our lives. And I still tell people, it was, I, when I look back, it's, it was perhaps, I believe, the greatest time of our lives being in that nation. All God uh, did and all God is still doing, it, is, it blows my mind. And while we were there, there were many ups and many downs, different stories and different encounters we had. And there was a lady we met, she used to work for, a, at that time she was working for social services, and she shared a story with us while she was working there. There was a, a, a young girl who came, she lived in an area called New Rester, and she had come home from school and she had, you know, her parents were home, her siblings were home, and she, you know, she just came and kind of left her back and went outside to play. You know, they still play outside back then. Not like they do here. Yeah. They, play outside, you know, yeah. they, they play outside. They, yeah. She's outside, she's playing with her friends for hours and hours and hours and hours and on end. It begins to get dark. Everyone is dark. They're still playing. So she decides, I'm going to go home. When she goes home, there's nobody at home. There's absolutely nothing there. And she probably thinks that's strange. And she goes back out to maybe look around and speak to a couple of neighbors, etc. And 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 and, 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 and she, you know, she, nothing's happened as in this. She doesn't understand what's going on. She goes back in the house again. There's nobody there. And to cut a long story short, her father, her mother, her brothers had been left her alone. As in, they, they abandoned her. They left, she had no idea where she was. And, and she was taken into social services uh, uh, to be cared for, to be looked for, because her whole family had a abandoned her. There is no reason given. There is no rhyme or reason behind it all. It all. They just decided we're just going to leave. We're going to do whatever we're doing. And they left this young girl, eight years old, all alone. I want you to think about that. One of our family friends of ours uh, connected with my wife uh, from Guyana. And uh, what happened is um, his mother, his uh, siblings, aunties and uncles, uh, they 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 all going to go out on a day's outing, and they, they hired some taxis. I think maybe it was two three taxi loads of family members, nothing more, nothing less. They're gonna go off somewhere in Guyana to have a good outing. And to cut a long story short, the, the the buses get involved in an accident, and in one moment, not even one day, one moment, this young man loses his mother, his his grandmother, his cousins, his aunties, literally his whole family wiped out. And a year before, his dad had died, lost. Everybody, everyone's gone. No mother, no father, grandparents, cousins, dead in one go like that. Why am I saying this? One of the painful truths of life or painful realities of life is this life hurts. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to you, you know you don't have to live too long uh, to find this out. Uh, I, I, and the truth is today, every single one of us, we're either carrying events of hurt or we're carrying people of hurt. Mm-hmm. Here is Joseph. He's a man with a painful past that, and none of it was his fault. Like many of us, Joseph was born into a dysfunctional family. Mm-hmm. When that word dysfunctional, it means a mess. It means dad's a mess. It means mom's a mess. It means my sisters, my brothers, they are a mess. He's born into this dysfunctional family. And the problem with dysfunctional family is dysfunctional family goes on to produce dysfunctional children. Dysfunctional children goes on to produce a dysfunctional society. And a dysfunctional society goes on to produce a dysfunctional word. When I look at the word of God, I like the Bible so much because the Bible is an honest book. There is no way a man could have written this book. Because we would have hidden stuff. We would have tried to gloss it and glamorize some things. Things, but the yep. Bible is the simple hard truth. It does not hide the mess and the pain of men and life. We are told from the get-go in the book of Genesis chapter 4 that Cain, he murders his own brother Abel out of jealousy. Dinah is raped because she's hanging around with the wrong crowd. In the New Testament, God tells employers not to treat employees unfairly. There is divorce. There is abuse. There is fatherlessness, which causes both male and female to seek male recognition. I can go on and on and on. What am I saying this this afternoon? Life hurts, church. See, when we get saved, God begins an unraveling process. He begins to unravel things that have wrapped us up. I'm talking about deep things. And what I want you to see is God never promised us uh, that life uh, will be without pain. You and I do not get a choice there. In fact, the Lord Jesus says in this world, uh, you're going to have tribulation. You see, the choice we have uh, is are we going to go through the pain by ourselves or are we going to through the pain by the grace of God? And God, amen, is making us a promise that he will never leave us. Uh, he will never forsake us even through the ebbs and flows of life. 
In our text, we find Joseph. Joseph is a man that has been through some very painful experiences. The Bible tells us he's sold by his brothers into slavery. They were, in fact, they were planning to kill him, but he decided, you know, let's make a quick buck out of this, uh, this pain on the backside. Let's sell him. Let's make some money. They sell him as a slave to the Israelites. The Israelites take him and they sell him uh, into the house of Potiphar. And if you know your Bible in Genesis 37, all the way to 50, it tells you account of Joseph. He sold uh, by the Israelites to, jo to Potiphar's house. He's a faithful worker is a good worker. Mrs. Potiphar likes Joseph. The Bible tells us he's basically good looking. He's a fine young man and the boss you can say the boss's wife has a thing for the employer and she wants to mess around with him but he rejects her. She cries or she screams rape and he's taken her from the house of Potiphar and is thrown into the prison and while he's there he's helping people he's being a blessing to people. God is you can say fine tuning his ability to be able to interpret dreams and he's able to tell the butler, you're going to be free. Baker, you're going to die. And it happened exactly as Joseph says. And he tells the butler, listen, I've interpreted your dream for you. Please remember me. Tell the Pharaoh, I don't deserve to be here. I, 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 you know, all the all the accusations against me simply not true. The butler says, not a problem. I'm going to tell Pharaoh. And Joseph is for forgotten for two more years. But in one day, God turns the whole situation around. Pharaoh has a dream that nobody can interpret. It. And finally, the butler remembers, oh, there is this guy I, uh, when I was in prison, Pharaoh, I met this young uh, Hebrew uh, and he was able to interpret my dream. I'm sure he can do yours. Uh, uh, Joseph is brought before Pharaoh, which is the king. He interprets the dream. Uh, and in one day, a man is turned from a zero to a hero. Uh, he becomes the second most powerful man in the world. Uh, he's given all authority all over, not just Egypt, uh, but the world. Because at that time, Egypt was the world's superpower. It would be like you uh, being the most second powerful man or woman uh, amen, in a uh, uh, America, uh, and women don't like it, but they are the superpower of the world, uh, and uh, he's, he's given authority, uh, uh, he's, uh, the Pharaoh basically says, here's my ring of authority, you do what you need to do, uh, you have tremendous wisdom, you guide us through this time of famine uh, that you said that God is going to bring, uh, and at that time of famine, uh, all the world is coming uh, to Egypt to buy grain, all the world is coming to Egypt to buy bread, uh, and here is Joseph, uh, he's there, uh, he's buying, uh, he's selling, uh, he's telling people, no shift this, uh, no move that, uh, he's He's got his Egyptian iPad, he's swiping, amen, he has the best uh, uh, Egyptian chariot, lowered wheels, spinning, amen, booming system, people, family, giving, amen, uh, air conditioning, making sure he's cool, amen, he has a beautiful wife, she's giving him two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, life is wonderful, things are going well, then one day as he's buying and selling and making things booze, he looks up and he sees some men walking towards him, and he recognizes them, they don't recognize him, they are his brothers who sold him into slavery many years ago to be that to the dead. Mm. Now I want to ask you a question. We all see the born again here, I hope. <laughs> what would you do if your siblings threw you into a pit, had a picnic, at talking to each other about killing you? Yeah. The one of them decides, no, let's not kill him, let's make money out of him. Let's sell him as a slave. They sell him as a slave as far as they're concerned. At that those times, if you were a slave, you were simply you were as good as dead. Years have gone past. God has kept your life. God has not just kept you. God has elevated you to be the second most powerful man in the world. Time has passed. You've grown. You've got your man's strength. You've got the man them around you now because you're the second most powerful man in the world. And you finally see those very men who threw you into a pit, who decided to make some money out of you. They don't recognize you. You recognize them. What would you do? It's on site. <laughs> I know we're all Christian and we'll forgive them. <laughs> now, what do you think about this? Think about the rush of emotion and memories that are coming upon Joseph right there. Yeah. Think about that. All the, you know, they are, the Bible says he was crying and begging. He's remembering all of that. It's all coming back to him. Yeah. And here they are, they just kind of. I mean, they see him, they fall down and bow down before him, not yeah. knowing. That's our brother. Yeah. That's the one we, we sold for death. Mm -hmm. They are bound down and worship him just as the dream God gave us at 17 years old. It's happening now. He has a life in his hands. But all his memories are just flushing back of the past. Then he quickly realizes that I may be free on the outside because I have all these things happening. I have my wife. I have my kids. I have this job. I have this nice chariot. I have the, the, the love of Pharaoh and Egyptian people. All these things externally are going to work for me. 
but internally I'm a mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's consider exposing the enemy. Because this afternoon all of us have hurts from life. Mm -hmm. But what I want you to see is they are all in the past tense. Mm -hmm. None of us, they have already happened. Yeah. Have you ever seen somebody who hurt you, maybe who broke your heart, and you came to the horrible, or the horrible realization, I haven't gotten over you yet? Yeah. Maybe I'm the only one. <laughs> you can't mind you, you're walking, you're walking down Fourth Street, and all of a sudden, yeah. and your heart goes too. <laughs> <laughs> Right? And it's this horrible, years have passed, years, you know, five, six, seven years, eight years since he dumped you. Hey. Okay. Come on. Since you went with your friend. Hey. Right? Time has passed. Right? You just kind of cut, you ain't sitting there for time, and finally you're like, whoa! <laughs> this is Joseph right now. One man asks his friend, why do you look so depressed? So I'm thinking about my future. So what makes it look so bleak? He says, my past. Mm -hmm. It is a wonderful thing to see them and no longer be moved by them. Mm -hmm. I've seen people that did me wrong and time has passed. They're like, oh, that's her. Oh, that's him. Yeah. And I keep moving. Yeah. But I've also seen them. Yeah. You, feel, you feel that, oh, yeah. like, like yesterday just came back in your face. Yeah. I'll say it again, it is a wonderful thing to see them and no longer to be moved by them. Yeah, yeah. See, we see them, we don't know how to deal with the pain. And Satan knows this, and what he's after here is our response. See, when we are hurt, we either, we either react and we explode, we call this a short fuse. Or we, we, we just take it and we 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 take it and, take it and finally, kaboom. Yeah, yeah. Mm. An evil one is wrong. Yeah. Because they are both destructive. Yeah. Listen, church, the pain in your past doesn't stay in your past. It travels to your present and it wants your future. And the devil plays a big yeah. role in this. Yeah. And every time there is pain in our lives, the devil begins to put fear and shame around the pain because he wants to keep those things in darkness. Mm -hmm. One of the hallmarks of a dysfunctional family is secrecy. Yeah. Hey. You know what this function family is? That you don't say it. Don't say it. And we keep in the family. And we don't say stuff. And we don't we don't bring things out of the open. We don't deal with things. Nobody's talking about things they need to be talking about because we don't do that in the family. It's all secrecy, it's all hush hush. See, we don't want to talk about it. And that is exactly what the devil wants. But you need to understand this today, that anything in the darkness is in the, is in the devil's domain right. because he's the prince of darkness. Yeah. But anything in the light belongs to God. Yeah. We are told in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Listen to me this afternoon. The devil uses pain and trauma in our lives as an opportunity to speak. Mm -hmm. Here is Job. Job gets bad news after bad news, after bad news, one servant comes, uh, wow, we were, we were doing this, uh, uh, the, 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 all, all your, your goods and, uh, and your animals, they died, uh, and while he was still finished, another servant comes, while we're still doing this, all the goods were taken away, and then finally, another one came, while we're still doing this, fire came back from heaven and killed all your children. Then you have his wife saying, curse God and die. Why do hold on to? Why do you hold on so fast uh, to your integrity? Church, this was a painful time. How many have had one of those before? Yeah. A very painful time. Now listen to me. The worst thing about pain is not the pain. The worst thing about pain is the message of the pain. Mm -hmm. Because each time the pain hit Job, there was a message attached to the pain from the enemy. A message like your failure. Yeah. What kind of father are you? Why weren't you there for your child? Yeah, yeah. You're a fool. You're a loser. You, you know, you, 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 you need to hate. You need to, be, you need to be bitter. You're a tool to be used. Listen to me this afternoon. The devil is a master of disguise. At, in the garden, he came disguised as a serpent. Paul tells us no wonder he transforms into an angel of light. And there are many disguises. The devil comes and he disguises himself. But none of these are his best disguise. I believe his best disguise he comes in us. 
Mm. Or what I mean, he comes in our thoughts. Mm. He introduces thoughts into our minds, and we don't resist those thoughts because we think they're coming from us. Mm -hmm. This is why the Bible tells us, church, that we are to, in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Jesus Christ. That means to bring those thoughts, amen, as it on next to the word of God, as a filter. That this is God, this is flesh. This is God, this is the devil. This is God, this is me. To bring, amen, those thoughts next to the word of God and let God deal with them in your life. Yeah. So the aim of pain is to cause us to accuse, to blame, and to ultimately reject God. Yeah. If God is so good, fill in the blanks. I wonder how many people asked that question before. Mm. There's a story of a lady, and she's a bit well-to-do, she's a bit, uh, uh, you know, old-fashioned, you can say upper-class lady. And she's planning a couple of weeks in a uh, 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 a, um, a caravan park and you know she's quite delicate, she's quite elegant and she wants to write um, to the camp manager to find out uh, whether they have a toilet in this caravan park but she doesn't use the word toilet because she's proper you know, she's proper, she's not like us commoners <laughs> and she's she, 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 she like what, I got a proper toilet? No, no no, and she she goes, all right. Um, uh, and she, she found this old word called a bathroom commode. <laughs> so she begins to, you know, write, which I know we don't do that anymore. She's, you know, we say text or tweet. So she's writing and she's like, dear camp manager, does your campsite have a bathroom commode? And even after that, she says, that doesn't sound right. So she decides, you know what, I'm going to go BC instead. So dear camp manager, is there a BC at your campsite? Oh, that sounds better. So she sends this letter off to the camp manager. He opens the letter and she sees, you know, here, you know, my name is so and so, and I, I want to come to your campsite. And I'm wondering, is there a BC a toilet in your campsite? He like, takes a letter to people. Hey, do you guys know what BC means? Nobody knows what BC is. Everyone's trying. Then finally, he kind of dawns him. Oh no, she must mean she's asking about the local Baptist church. Oh. Then he decides, let me write back to this dear lady. And I want you to listen to the reply. He says, dear madam, I regret very much the delay in answering your letter. But I now take pleasure of informing you in that the BC is located nine miles north of the campsite <laughs> and is capable of seating 250 people at one time. <laughs> I admit it's quite a distance away if you like in the, if you are in the habit of going on a regular basis. <laughs> but no doubt you'll be pleased to know that a great number of people take their lunch along and make a day of it. Oh, wow. <laughs> they usually arrive early and stay late. <laughs> the last time my wife and I went was six years ago. And it was so crowded, we had to stand up the whole time we were there. It may interest you to know that right now, there is a supper being planned to raise money for more seats. They plan to hold a supper in the middle of the BC. Okay. So every time, so everyone can watch and talk about the great event. <laughs> I would like to say it pains me very much not to be able to go more regularly. But it's surely not out of a lack or desire of my part. As we grow older, it seems to be more and more of an effort, to partic particularly in the cold weather. If you decide to come down to the campground, perhaps I can go with you for the first time. I can sit with you and introduce you to all the nice people. This really is a friendly community. Now, we may laugh or find out a very funny story, and I did when I first read it. But here's the truth of this story. Our problem is many of us, we're carrying faulty messages. Yeah. You're ugly. You're good for nothing. You're stupid. You're worthless. There's something wrong with me. I've seen too much that God can't help forgive me. You can't trust people, they're always going to disappoint you. I'm always going to be this way. Faulty messages. Now I've gone through all I got to say this today. 
so much of who we are is connected to our past and our parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I say again, someone needs to hear that. So much of who we are today is connected to our past and our parents. Listen, church, there are generational impacts you and I must deal with. We are connected to generations before us for good and for bad. And there are two things that connect us to the negatives of our past. The first one is iniquities. I remember when we were in Queenstown. We were invited, funny enough, after service, you guys are going to be having a barbecue apparently. Funny enough, hmm, you're invited to. <laughs> Funny enough, it was like this. There was a service. After service, the guys would go to a barbecue. And they invited myself and my wife. They better do because we did. <laughs> so we went to this barbecue after service. And we're there, and everyone's there, and everyone's having a good time. And there's this grill. And this grill is dirty, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. And what they do in South Africa, they, they cut an onion into half, yeah, yeah, and yeah. dig the onion and begin to rub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The and I said, no, sir, not me. Take that thing off, clean it properly. Mm -hmm. There is an iron, you know, mesh. Yeah. There's a there's a tap there in the sink, big old sink as so scrub that thing off. You don't put my meat on that last thing as an yeah. onion. What kind of that? Mm -hmm. So you know they kind of look at me like they're kind of confused because we always use an onion. I said, give me that thing. I rolled up my shirt. I had this shirt on. This is this is this this shirt to me was the best shirt in the whole entire world. Rolled up the shirt. Brought it up, took this grill, went to the oh, thing, nice. got to took the uh, the mesh, began to clean this with salt. Yeah, this <laughs> guy, watch this. <laughs> and all of you like, you, yo, you, 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 pastor, yo. And I'm like, stop, 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 Proud of myself, I cleaned the grill, etc. So forth. I'm there. I remember eating this meat, and part of the, the juice just hit my shirt. Oh, no. oh, facts. Oh, so baby, you got some, you know, she tells me about the uh, our baby wipes and you can cleanse anyone from this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Two baby wipes. I'm clean, 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 clean. And he took some off, but it's still there. But I didn't even worry. I will put it in the washing machine when I get home. Yeah, food. Soon I got home, took my shirt, put a washing machine, put the thing, went to bed, didn't worry about it. Next morning came, gonna get my shirt, open it, and put it on. It's like, okay, more is gone, but there's still something there. Mm. Okay, what well, I want to do, I'm gonna give the dry cleaners. Wait the dry cleaners, give the dry cleaners, say, listen, this is to keep, do something, do what you need to do, put some chemicals, no problem, sir. Bam, gave it to them. Uh, two days later, came the next day, you know, it's all, you know, the, the plastic, got it, looked at it like, okay, more is gone. But it's still there. Mm. That's iniquity. Iniquity is the stain that is left after the incident. Something has been passed from the barbecue to my clothes. Iniquity is what is passed to us from our parents. There are iniquities of anger. Bad anger. There's iniquity of physical abuse, verbal abuse, immorality, racism, pride, sexual abuse, negativity, dishonesty, divorce, gossip, materialisticness, unforgiveness, greed. Pastor Young's very quiet here right now. <laughs> These are all things that our parents did that we pick up and now we have a tendency towards. Mm -hmm. One of the guys that was in my church in South Africa, his name was uh, Paul. And Paul, he married a wonderful lady called Nadine Nadipa. They had a son. His name was Jonathan. And I remember when I saw Jonathan, he not only didn't look like his dad, he looked, I mean, he couldn't cry Billy Jean on this. For those of you old enough, you know that. He could not sing Billy Jean on this child. This child was his child, right? And, 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 and one thing, when you talk to Paul, Paul, you talk to Paul, and Paul would just, yeah, yeah, you know what? 
Yeah, pastor, yeah, you are. But you understand, pastor? That's you do that. That's just Paul saying. So I remember when I saw Jonathan in the skin. Oh, this beautiful Jonathan, he's kind of there. And I, you see him, he's there. <laughs> he died in teaching that. That's iniquity. That's been passed on to him. Let me ask you a question. Do you practice the same thing you didn't agree with or like about your parents? Many a young man, I never want to be like my dad. Give it time. Give it time. You'll be shocked. I'm never going to be like that man. Give it time. Keep living. See, here's the terrible truth about iniquities. We don't like what our parents do. But we end up doing it. We are walking recorders. For some, it's a case of exampleship. For others, it is DNA, like Jonathan to his father, Paul. And what happens now we are adults and we face problems. We simply go back and we play how they dealt with their circumstances and we relive it. This is what they did. This is how I'm going to do it. This is how they dealt with it. This is how I'm going to deal with it. I want you to think about Jacob's sons. Jacob's sons take their brother Joseph. They throw him into a pit. They find him inside. Instead of killing him, they sell him. They sell him. They take his clothes, his coat of many colors his father gave to him. They tear it into pieces. They kill an animal, put the blood on the animal, and they present it to their father. Says, something happened to your son. This is all that we found is left. Right? That's what happened, right? When you go in the Bible, just a little bit back, and you look at Jacob's life when Jacob was a young man. The Bible tells us that he, uh, uh, his mother uh, tells him to go and kill an animal. She takes the animal and she takes the skin and she puts that skin upon uh, uh, Jacob's uh, 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 arms because his brother Esau was a hairy man. And he calls and he puts the skin to pretend to be a hairy man. And he goes to his father Isaac and he says, Father, you bless me. And the father goes, is that you, uh, 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 Esau? No, 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 it's your son Jacob. There's an old saying, a chip of the old no. block, that the apple doesn't fall too, fall too far from the tree. Mm -hmm. Where did they get that from? See, like it or not, we are normally going to respond the way our parents responded. And I would dare say, even right now, some of you are responding the same way your parents have been responding. You run away from your problems instead of facing it. You climb up instead of talking to your pastor about the issues. Can I dare say that people right, who are not here right now because you're running away from talking to your pastor? You are always right because they are always right. You never apologize because mom and dad never apologize. Oh, I'll see you once again. Yeah. <laughs> Iniquities. The next, the other one is inner vows. Mm. An inner vow is a self-directed promise that results from an unpleasant past experience or hurt. Maybe you were hurt by your parents. Maybe you were hurt by your siblings. Maybe you were hurt by someone. You, you know, you, you, you know. I'm sure a face maybe is coming to your mind right now. And when we respond in a certain way to hurt, albeit bad or the wrong way, we are simply trying to survive. See, the devil comes at these times of hurt, and it takes advantage of the situation to get us to say and do things we're going to end up regretting. Mm -hmm. Here is an inner vow. I will never trust again. Here's another inner vow. I will never spank my children. <laughs> even though the Bible says spare the rod and spare the child. Even though the Bible says even if you beat them, they will die. <laughs> it's in the Bible. It's there. 
we just kind of skip past that. We just pretend we don't see it. It's there. I will never allow myself to be hurt again. I will never go to be poor again. See, what we're trying to do is comfort ourselves in religious vows. When you go through a difficult circumstance or a difficult situation, it is comfort comforting, you, could I say, to say, I'm not going back there again. This is not going to happen to me ever again. You make it in a vow. Here's the problem with inner vows. They violate the word of God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 33 to 37. Again, this is Jesus speaking. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oath to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Yeah. You know what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying? He says, when you go around swearing to yourself or anything else, he says it's evil. Why is it evil? Because when you make an inner vow, you become Lord of that area of your life, and Jesus Christ is not Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to be poor again. Guess who is now Lord of your finances? Mm -hmm. I'm, never going, I, I, I'm never going to let anyone hurt me again. Guess who is now Lord of your relationships? Mm -hmm. I know ladies, right? I know ladies, in their mind they've said this, and it's in the vow. I'll never be a bridesmaid again. Do you understand what I mean? Because everybody keeps on being asked but me. Everyone keeps on being asked to be married, but they ain't asking me. The only thing I get asked for is to be a bridesmaid. I'm not doing that anymore. Jesus Christ said, you perform your oaths to him. You don't swear by your head or anything else. You don't have a right because all of a sudden you're going to become God of your own life. You don't have that right. You just simply do what I tell you to do, period. So, let's look at breaking the hurts of the past. What event did this to you? What, a, what event caused you to make an inner vow? I'm going to share two with you with my, from my own life. It's always good to be real with these things. And uh, I'm going to share two. I was born in Nigeria and I came here when I was about eight years old. And I remember being in school. And I remember, you know, when I would come to school, I would always tell my teacher, good morning. Just manners. Yeah. Good morning, miss. Good morning, miss. Good morning, miss. Good morning, miss. Without fail. One day I came to school and I do not know why, but I simply forgot to tell her good morning. I just forgot. I still remember it today. She came up to me. She turned me around. And she said, why didn't you say good morning to me? And I was kind of stunned. And like, it dawned on me, oh, I didn't say good morning to her, right? It dawned on me, like, what's it? But before I could reply, I said, yes, I didn't. She slapped me. Whack! In front of everybody. Remember, I'm about seven, eight years old. I was slapped. All because I didn't say good morning. Mm -hmm. And from that day, I began to think it doesn't pay to be nice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't pay to be polite. It doesn't. As I began to get older, I came to the UK. My hormones began to jump around. <laughs> I began this, I, I, I started discovering this, this creatures called girls. Mm -hmm. so I started liking one or two girls. And after being used about, about two or three, I came to a place where I said, you know what? All girls are good for is you can their lives. Mm -hmm. 
Some, I, I, something switched to me that day. The moment I thought that, am I doing this and buying robes like the movie says, and buying chocolates and the like movie says, that's what you can watch movies. Buying all these things. Right? Don't so watch, it's a lie. It's a lie. I'm just, I'm just following the, the cue of the movies. That in the end, boys gonna win girl. A lie, my turn right there. All it did was girl broke apple's heart. And I came to the point that all girls are good for is. So what I didn't write is this past events were affecting my future people. These past events of having my heart being broken was affecting my future with my wife. Mm. That if I was still thinking like that, I would not be married today. If I still hold on to that, I will not be faithful to that today. So let me ask you, what a pleasant event in your life triggered you here about? Because you didn't tell it was God, tell it was yourself. And that's sin. And that brings the second thing, you need to realize it's sin. Because whether it be iniquities or in the vows, the problem is sin. Yeah. It's not, well, you don't understand, that's just how I am. No, sin. Mm-hmm. You don't understand, just, that's, what we, that's, what we, that's what we do in, in Edmonton. <laughs> <laughs> it's sin. Yeah. This means taking your responsibility of it and repenting. Yeah. It's not about blaming others. Great. Let me say this, let me say this, let me say this real quick. This sermon is not giving you an excuse to blame your problems on people or like your parents. Yeah. Oh, 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 it's my parents. Oh my days. I've got this one. Oh, so, so it's my parents' fault. No. Come on. You, have you ever met people who say, you know, I didn't choose to be born? Yeah. <laughs> Big old 18 year old. I didn't choose to be born. You are here. Get on with life. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to climb back in your mother's womb. <laughs> Get over your life for crying out loud. Yeah. This sermon is to help you to recognize what the issue is and deal with it. Yeah. Listen, the life does not form me. My response to life forms me. Yeah, and the devil knows this and, and he wants us to have a victim mentality. Well, the reason I'm like this is because of my parents. It's my parents. Well, no, 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 no. God wants us to be a victor. Amen. That in spite of all the negative things that's happened in my life and in my past, I can rise above them and overcome. That's right. Yeah. That's the Christian spirit. That's the God spirit in us. Realize it's sin. Number three, you need to forgive. See, with the iniquities and inner vows, the problem is people. Listen, church, our problems today can all be traced back to sin. And if you look at what's wrong with your life, it is either your sin or somebody else's sin that's messed you up. It's people. You know, the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Mm-hmm. Have you realized that scripture is talking about you as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're all feeling like somebody else, right? Yeah. Every man a liar, you're a liar. No, you're a liar. No, you too. Because <laughs> you're part of the every man. Yeah, yeah. Let God be true and every man a liar. See, whoever they are, whether it be a parent, whether it be an old boyfriend, an old girlfriend, whether it be people, forgive whoever did whatever to you. You need to forgive them. Let it go. Number four, give it to God. And what I mean by this is you need to submit your iniquity to God. With some people here, your mouth is your iniquity. You may be saved, but your mouth is not saved. With other people's anger, others is pride. Insecurities, yeah. emotions. Mm-hmm. And what I'm saying is, you, I'm going to now view this from God's point of view. Lord, I need to teach me this area of my life. Yeah. Help me with my mouth. Help me with my insecurities. Help me with my pride. Help me with my ego. And we submit it to God. Let me add this to you. You are opening yourself to somebody who understands pain. What do I mean? There is no one, I'm going to say it again, no one, no one in this building, no one in the Edmonton, no one in North London, no one in the United Kingdom, no one in this world that has been through more pain than Jesus. Yes. Yeah. 
And that is the person you are bringing that iniquity to. That's what you're bringing your pain to. The Bible says he sympathizes with us. He understands. He gets it. So let's close. Listen, church, inside you there's history. Inside me there's history. But inside all of us there's a glorious future as well. If you drive a car, you realize you have a very large windscreen and very small rear view mirrors. And what this implications are very obvious. And what that means, what happened in your past is nowhere near as important as what is in your future. Yeah. And where you are going is more greater than wherever you have been. Yeah. And you need to understand no generation is free to make any progress because of iniquities and inner vows until somebody stands up within that generation. Somebody stands up within your family line, within your bloodline, and says, it stops with me today in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That this is done. Yeah. This ain't going anymore. Listen to me, there are men here Especially in our generation where fatherlessness is just a horrible, horrible pandemic. That's the real pandemic, fatherlessness. In that generation, you need to rise up and say, that nonsense is stopping with me. I'm going to forget reverend flag. I'm going to rep the image of God as a father. I'm going to rep the role of God as a father. I'm going to be a father and look after my sons and my daughters. I'm going to teach my son to be a man. I'm going to teach my daughter the kind of man she ought to marry. I'm going to begin to break that nonsense in my family life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. This is to stop. Yeah. But somebody needs to be that man. Mm -hmm. Ladies as well. That is, I'm going to be that person. Yeah. I think Michael Jackson said it best. Can you imagine the one of the court <laughs> I'm looking at the man in the mirror. Yeah. I'm asking him to change his ways. Yeah. Things are going to get better. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself. Yeah. And you better make that change. Yeah. Can I add, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.